Hello, welcome to our study of the colligative properties of solutions. I'll try to make this as brief as possible and ensure that um, I'll only be telling you things that are part of your syllabus. I mean, just what the syllabus requires of you. Now, for colligative properties of solutions, well, we know that um, solutions can have different properties like um, concentration, like color, like temperature. You know, these are properties of solutions. But there are certain properties of solutions that are related to the quantity of solute present in the solution. And we refer to such properties as colligative properties. In other words, a colligative property of a solution is a property that is affected or that varies with, you say it's affected by or varies with the quantity of solute present in that solution. So any quantity that varies with quantity of solutes or any property that varies with quantity of solutes or any property that um, depends on the quantity of solute present in that solution is called a colligative property. So I'm going to write here, first thing about colligative properties, they depend on the quantity of solutes present in the solution. That's the first thing about them. So they vary just with quantity of solute. So when quantity of solute changes, these properties will also change. Then, leaving what they involve, the common colligative properties of solutions that you are expected to study at this level are lowering of vapor pressure lowering of vapor pressure i'll comment on this soon second one is molar elevation of boiling point then the third one is molar depression of freezing point and then there's the last one called uh, exhibition exhibition of an osmotic pressure exhibition of an osmotic pressure now molar elevation of boiling point we say that is um ebullioscopy ebullioscopy and then molar depression of freezing point we talk about that as cryoscopy so cryoscopy and ebullioscopy have to do with elevation of um or sorry depression of freezing point and elevation of boiling point respectively so these are four colligative properties that we'll study but even before we enter any of them i would like to first remind us of the fact that these colligative properties as i have listed them are the consequences of a solute being dissolved in a solvent. For example, let's say I have a solvent. Why? This is a solvent. Pure solvent, no solute in it. And then suddenly, I add a solute, X, to it. The moment I add X as solute, non-volatile solute to y which is my solvent the vapor pressure of that solvent will be lowered that's one of the things that will happen so if its vapor pressure were here before the addition of the solute it will go there it drops so the addition of solute has a first consequence which is lowering of vapor pressure and that's not all that happens to the solvent the next thing that happens to the solvent here is its boiling point will be elevated. That is, the boiling point of the solvent becomes higher than that of the pure solvent. It's higher than what it would have been without the solute. Then what about the freezing point of the solvent? It becomes lower than normal. So we say the freezing point has been depressed. And then finally, 
that solvent that possibly did not exert any osmotic pressure before begins to exert an osmotic pressure. So these are the four things that occur to a solvent or occur in a solvent when a solute is added to it. We call them colligative properties. So we'll talk about these four colligative properties one at a time. The very first one now would be lowering of vapor pressure. Lowering of vapor pressure. Now for lowering of vapor pressure, I already told us that when solute is added to solvent, the vapor pressure of that solvent will drop. But we are more interested in the mathematics, the, the quantitative aspect of this. And we can only look at the quantitative aspect by talking about a law, what we call Raoult's law. So Raoult's law forms the whole basis. It forms the basis for lowering of vapor pressure calculations. Now, what does Raoult's law state? Raoult's law states, and I'll write here that the vapor pressure, the vapor pressure of a solvent in a solution is the product of the vapor pressure, permit me to write VP there, vapor pressure, of the pure solvent, of the pure solvent, and its mole fraction, its mole fraction in the solution. The vapor pressure of a solvent in a solution is the product of two things. And what are these two things? First, the vapor pressure of the pure solvent. And second, the mole fraction of the same solvent in the solution. So mathematically, we can express this as pressure solution. Why well, am I writing P solution now? It is the vapor pressure of the solvent when solute has already been added. So that's the pressure of the solution. is equal to the mole fraction of the solvent times the pressure of the pure solvent. So everything on the right of this expression is solvent, solvent. So pressure of a solution is mole fraction of the solvent times the pressure of the pure solvent. Now remember that the pressure of the solution is always less than the pressure of the pure solvent. Why? Because we said when solute is added to a pure solvent to form a solution, there will be lowering of vapor pressure. So the pressure of the solution is always less than that of the solvent. The difference between the two of them, the difference between the pressure of the solvent and the pressure of the solution can be calculated as P solvent minus P solution. So that if, for example, we had a solvent with a pressure of 100 atmospheres before adding any solute, and then after adding solute, the pressure drops to 98.8 atmospheres. It will mean that this 98.8 is the P solution, while the 100 is the P solvent. So that the change in pressure, delta P now, will be equal to P solvent minus P solution. So P solvent minus P solution, 100 minus 98.8, gives us delta P, which we call change in pressure. Now, instead of calculating pressure of solution, pressure of solvent, in order to get your delta P, we can write a second formula that says delta P equals mole fraction of solutes, this time solute, times the pressure of the pure solvent. 
So these are two formulas that are very important in this regard when you are solving questions on lowering of vapor pressure. But before we can even solve any question on this, I'll need to show you how to calculate mole fraction because we are seeing the mole fraction of solute and mole fraction of solvent. So what is mole fraction? Let's say I have A as solute and then B as solvent. So A is dissolved in B. And the number of moles of A dissolved is 2 moles. Whereas the number of moles of B dissolved is 5 moles. Or sorry, the number of moles of B in which A was dissolved was 5 moles. Eh? So 2 moles of A dissolved in 5 moles of B. It will mean that the total number of moles in the entire solution is 7 moles. And in that case, the mole fraction of the solute, which is A, so mole fraction of solute, will be equal to the number of moles of that A, 2, over the total number of moles, 7. Whereas the mole fraction of the solvent, which is B now, mole fraction of solvent, will be equal to the number of moles of the solvent, 5, over the total number of moles, 7. That is how we calculate mole fraction for solute and solvent. Now, having shown you how we calculate mole fraction of solute and solvent, we will see one question. I will write out just one question. And for that question, we are going to see how we can calculate um, the, the pressure of the solution as well as the change in pressure. So I'm going to give us a question like this one. It's just a sample question. And the question will be just enough to show you what this is about. So consider this as a sample question. It says, um, 18 grams of glucose is dissolved in uh, let's see let's say we use uh, 3.6 or 0 0.54 beautiful this will end it 5.4 grams of water to give a solution that exerts or that has a vapor pressure of X atmospheres at 40 degrees Celsius. Now, given that the vapor pressure of pure water at 40 degrees Celsius is 100 atmospheres calculate one the value of x and then two the change in pressure so look at this it's a sample question 18 grams of glucose is dissolved in 5.4 grams of water to give a solution that has a vapor pressure of what x atmospheres at 40 degrees celsius so x atmospheres is the pressure of the solution then it says given that the vapor pressure of the pure solvent pure water at 40 degrees celsius is 100 atmospheres calculate first the value of x so what is x the pressure of the solution then the second one says we should calculate the change in pressure of course by what amount is the vapor pressure lowered that's what they're asking us there so to answer this question I'll bring out the parameters I have first I was given the masses of glucose and water and what will I do with them I'll use them to calculate number of moles so number of moles for glucose will be equal to the mass over the molar mass 
number of moles of glucose therefore will be mass of glucose 18 over if you calculate the molar mass of glucose c 6 8 12 o 6 you get 180 so 18 divide 180 that gives me 0 0.1 mole then for the water number of moles of water let's put a line here number of moles of water again equals mass of a molar mass so that number of moles of water will be 5.4 which is the given mass of water divided by the molar mass of water is popular that's 18 if you do that division you get 0 0.3 moles so it means that the total number of moles will be equal to 0 0.1 for solute plus 0 0.3 for solvent and that is 0 0.4 moles in all so that if I were to answer the first question, question one now, I am to calculate the vapor pressure of the solution. And of the two formulas I gave you a while ago, the first one says pressure of the solution equals mole fraction of solvent times the pressure of the pure solvent. So that the pressure of the solution here will be equal to What's the mole fraction of the solvent? Now, the solvent is water, and its mole fraction will be 0 0.3 out of 0 0.4. So, we said it is its number of moles over the total number of moles times the pressure of the solution is 100, and that gives me 75 atmospheres. So, it means that the vapor pressure of the solution will be 75 atmospheres. Now the second question says that I should calculate the change. By what amount did the vapor pressure drop? To calculate the change, delta P now, I can simply say it is pressure of solvent minus pressure of solution. So it means that the change in pressure equals 100 minus 75 and that gives me 25 atmospheres however it is not in every case that we are given the first question as calculate pressure of solution so that the second question becomes change it's possible that the question is just calculate change in that case would i have to come this far no that's the essence of the second formula because the second formula says that I could simply have written delta P equals pressure of solvent times mole fraction of solute. So which means delta P may also be calculated as what's the mole fraction of the solute here? You know, number of moles of solute is 0 0.1 and the total is 0 0.4. So it means I'm going to write 0 0.1 over 0 0.4 times the pressure of the pure solvent, pure water, we said it is 100. So it means that delta P now will be equal to 0 0.1 times 100 divided 0 0.4, and that is 25 atmospheres, the same answer. So sometimes, yeah, we are asked to calculate change in pressure only. In that case, you just change more fraction of solvent that you have in the original version of the formula to more fraction of solute that will give you delta p but if you were to calculate pressure of solution then you'd have to say that it is more fraction of solvent times the pressure of the pure solvent so that's just one example on um, lowering of vapor pressure and it's just sufficient Follow the same pattern for other questions and you get the answers right. Now, we'll move on to talk about ebullioscopy and cryoscopy. That is, lowering of um, or elevation of boiling point and depression of freezing point. But that will be after the break. <music>